All right, so welcome back to the video. I think it's like the ninth video. Uh, we're going crazy so far, but got someone I got off social media, and um, I have him introduce himself real quick. Go ahead, at the floor. All right, yo, if you don't know me, man, my name is Quentin Rainey Jr. Um, I go on my social media, my platform, I go by Mr. Lightwork48. A um, little bit about me, uh, I was a two-star athlete coming out of high school. Uh, I played three sports. I played uh, football. I did wrestling. I also did track. Uh, football was the main sport. Um, you know, coming out of Virginia, uh, I think I was at, in high school. I think I was like 19th or something like that, ranked out of my state. Uh, I end up choosing Kansas State University to play linebacker and everything. Spent my four years there. Well, four and a half, four and a half. And then uh, I did have a shot at the pros, but injuries from my senior year cut that all short. So, you know what I'm okay. saying? That's what's up. So, like you said, you you was, you was uh, you had to, he had a few stars coming out of high school. So, what was that process like coming from high school? Up and up to college, because that's a that's a whole different ball game playing in, in college. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a different speed, and and I want people to understand. Like when I talk about speed, I'm not talking about being fast in the field. Mm. It's your mental adjustments to the game. In high school, you know, we had basic stuff. I went mm. my first high school was very basic. Uh, I write thirty six blasts. We going to the right. <laughs> we going yeah. to the right. That's 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 what it is. <laughs> um. So my second high school, which was my senior year, um, our coach was played in NFL, so he had that NFL mindset. So when he would go and call a play for us, it would be like Chicago. <laughs> and you'd be like, you'd be like, what? Like sh Chicago, or he'll be like, um, Canada. And you'd be like, you'd be like, bro, what, what, what is Canada or Toronto? <laughs> like, what, what, are, what are these places? So, you know, and when you break it down, it's just simple as, simple as day. It's counter, trap, you know, it, it's very simple like that. So it, it got me prepared for college. Mm -hmm. So I was at a step behind in college, as in the mental aspect. I was more so a step behind when it came to school to natural speed because mm -hmm. when you got a boy from Virginia going against a boy from Florida, <laughs> it's different. It's a big difference. But yeah, man, uh, it was a major transition, but the the hardest part for me wasn't the field. It was more so being away from home and everything mm -hmm. like that, so. All right, that's what's up. So, if, uh, you know, like the typical, like how, when small schools, they always play the big schools. They play like Alabama, just to just to like for a warm up game. You feel me? So, yeah. what was that like playing? It's like a big team just to get whooped seventy five to two. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, out of my career in college, I played against uh, Boston College all four years. So mm -hmm. every every year I was on the field, we played Boston College. Uh, we played Iowa State two years. We played Kentucky. We played Ohio State one year. Um, we played Baylor. Mm. Uh, I think that was was that it. I think I think that was it. But play, we when we played against Iowa, that was my first game ever. First game <laughs> Iowa State was my first game ever. My eyes was big. I was out there. I was nervous. And I was just on, and I was just on kickoff. Like I was just on kickoff. Oh. And, you know, and we ended up beating them. And we ended up beating them. It was like this major upset for us. And, you know, we were excited, you know. But um, all the other games we lost. Like, we, we, didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have a chance against Ohio State. Ohio State beat the brakes off us. Like, mm. They beat us like they paid us to beat on us. Like they <laughs> take this half a half a million dollars to get whooped on. Like, yeah, <laughs> y'all got paid us all that matters. Yeah, like and people don't and people don't understand that. Like people don't get the the business side to mm. big schools playing these little it, schools. 
and stuff like that. It, it's crazy because I, I didn't I didn't realize that until maybe my senior year of high school. Like I didn't, I didn't realize I got paid to just get whooped for practice. <laughs> well, I mean, well, and like I tell you a funny story. Like when we were playing Ohio State, right? Uh-huh. It's so crazy because like your coaches, when they come to you, they're like, "All right, we're gonna win this game." They never said that. <laughs> Ohio State. They never said we were gonna win. They brought up stuff like, like you're gonna go against a man that's six foot eight. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Why do I care about how tall he is? Like, can we win this game? And it was absolutely not. Like, they almost shut us out. Like, that's how bad it was. They almost shut us out. But uh, yeah, man, we got paid a lot of money to get our tail whooped. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. So another question is, what, what was that like? Like, especially, I don't know if you like, especially like growing up playing, like playing and watching football. So what was it like playing like a Ohio State? Like, wow, like this dude across from me playing for a team I grew up watching for. Or watching and stuff like that. Man, it was, it was like, it was like mind blowing. Like it's, it's it's because when you're there and you get to the stadium, you know what I'm saying? It's huge, but you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? you really don't know how big it is. And you get into the locker room, you get changed, and you go out there for little little warm ups. You know what I'm saying? Um, out there catching the ball, you know, talking, looking at the stadium. But when the people get in there, like. We they sold out like Ooh. it blew my mind because they sold out for us. Like, who are we? We ain't nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they sold out and they had the chant going, the oh hey, Joe. They had that <laughs> going, like it's it's crazy. And then like the fact that it gets rocking, like it mm. gets like, rocking, man. And the speed, like, and people don't understand, like, when they talk about like SEC speed or Big Ten speed. That's real. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's a real thing. Like, them boys was humming down that field. And I, was, I didn't know what to do. I was just like, out there, I was like, man, let me just make it out the game. Like, this, <laughs> I just want to finish the game and tell my folks that I played against Ohio State. Like, that's all I really wanted to do. That's crazy. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I bet it was just like, wow. But, um, like you said at the beginning of the, um, of the video, you said it was hard transitioning from high school to college regarding like like being away from family and stuff like they didn't possibly like homework trying to balance homework school yeah. workouts and stuff like that so what was that transition like moving from Man. high school to college it's probably the toughest for me because you no longer have somebody there to be like hey man do your homework you know what i'm saying hey man go to class like you don't have that anymore you have all right this is your schedule this is mm-hmm. the time you got practice. You know, this this is what you got to go by. And it's like, okay. So I ain't going to front, man. The first time I, like, one day I just overslept. Like, I just overslept class. And I felt so bad. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm going to get it. I absent and all that. <laughs> Bruh, they don't when care. I that teacher didn't care. <laughs> Boy, I, st- I started missing that class left and right. <laughs> but, but, what it, but what it taught me was responsibility. Mm. You know? got to be accountable for yourself um, because when our uh, midterms came and our coach, he gets your grades. Like you don't, like you can check your grades, but you, but he gets the grades, like your position. Mm-hmm. And he called me in that office. He was like, uh, what's going on here? Like, <laughs> I, this ain't you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like this ain't you. So, you know, from that day on, I, I never missed a class, you know, I mean, of course you miss class, but it's not like, like, oh man, I'm just gonna man, bump that class. I ain't, I ain't doing it. <laughs> but uh, you know, that was the biggest thing for me. And then um, when the spring came, you know, your whole schedule changes, and, mm. uh, and a lot of kids ain't prepared for that. Like, you go from uh, practicing the uh, the PM, you know, what I'm saying at three and four, to now practicing in the morning, you know, in the snow, like. <laughs> It's crazy, man. Like, bro, I'm I'm having spring ball in the snow. Like, I could I couldn't do that being from Texas. I couldn't do that, man. I'm used to I'm used to the heat. That's why I'm sitting outside, man. I couldn't do that. You get me through, you go to Ohio. You go to one of them northern states, bro. Spring ball, half of spring ball is in the snow. I, could, I couldn't do that. 
what are we doing here? Like, nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, being in college as an athlete, especially in football, <clears throat> have you ever felt like having different kinds of treatment? Because me, it's kind of, for me in my situation, it's kind of weird because I'm not an athlete, but I used to be an athlete. So I look like I look like a football player. I feel like, <coughs> excuse me, but I feel like I get treated differently compared to other people because I'm a, I'm not an athlete. But did you feel like you got treated differently? Um, in some regards. Um, mm. Some classes, you know, if they're a fan or if you build relationships with these people, you know, they'll look out for you. They'll mm. stay after class and talk to you and, and things like that. Or, um, you know, they'll go the extra mile for you. But you have to build that. Like, just because you're a football player doesn't mean you just automatically get uh, special treatment. You know what I'm saying? Now, did we get treated different in, like, the cafeteria or – at events, like, you know, school events and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. But when it came to school, you know, teachers didn't care. You could mm. be you could be a nobody or you could be a somebody. They would treat you the same. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm but, you know, I had a cool, I had, some, I had some teachers that was real cool, so I was all right. I was always all right. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's what's up. So, um, what was like being an athlete? Of course, you lose motivation at times. At certain times, like, like I don't. Sometimes, like you don't feel like doing it. So, what what kept you? What kept you pushing throughout the season, spring ball, summer workouts as well? So yeah. Well, during the season, I never had a problem with motivation. You mm -hmm. know, it was always the next game. Like when we gonna get to the next game, so I could redeem either what I messed up on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? What can I? What can I improve on? Mm -hmm. the spring ball spring is where I struggled at because with winter workouts, you're just lifting weights and running. That's all you're doing. And we went through one year, man, it was called, we called it hell. Like that's <laughs> what, that's what winter workouts was. We call them 6 a.m. These 6 a.m. workouts was hell. And it felt like we were doing nothing but getting punished. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We're getting punished, we're getting punished, we're getting punished, but it made us tougher. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I used to lose motivation there. And then in spring ball, man, you just get you just get tired of hitting your teammates. Like, oh. <laughs> like, bro, like I see you every day. You my homeboy. And then next thing we gotta come out here and it's damn near we're like, we almost about to fight because you, you know what I'm saying? You done push me after the play, you done bump me. It's it's cold out here, my, my fingers are froze off, like bro. <laughs> like, but um the motivation in the, the winter was you know, was getting better. And and always getting ready for the season, you know what I'm saying? That's what the off season, the off season was for me. Mm, okay, so um, as of course someone who played football, growing up playing in Texas, which is a big thing, you deal with injuries a lot. So like, how how do you how do you keep your body right? How do you deal with injuries, recovering and stuff like that? So how for, do you deal for, with it in, in college for, at least? Oh, okay, for college, yeah, you, and in high school, yeah, too. Okay, high school. Okay, so for high school, I really didn't get injured until my senior year where I broke a bone in my my um my ankle. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they were like, look, man, look, you can either go in the cast, miss the rest of the season, or you can play on it, you know, and then get in the cast after the season. So obviously I wasn't missing <laughs> my senior year. So I played with a broken bone in my foot. And, and you have to do kind of like some self stuff. You got to do a lot mm -hmm. of self-care you know, your mom got to put the, your foot in the ice bucket and stuff like that. So that's a bucket, man. Right. So <laughs> that's that's high school. Now in college, the thing is, you got to go to treatment. Mm. You get a bump, you get a bruise, anything, man. You got to go to treatment because a lot of people feel like, oh, well, my legs just hurt, so I I, mm. I recover like I did in high school. That's not the case. That's not the case anymore. You know what I'm saying? You're doing a lot more. You're putting your body under intense pressure and, and intense fatigue and stuff. So go get an ice bath. You know what I'm saying? Go, you know, if your ankle, your ankle feeling funny, go go to the uh the trainer. Because I promise you, man, it's gonna help you out in the long run. Because when you get to the, the pros of, of any uh league, of any type of league, they find you for that. Like if you miss treatment. That's crazy. Right. They'll take your money if you miss treatment. <laughs> 
So you better go to treatment now so you know what's going on, you get acclimated to it, and you keep pushing forward, man. But I, I, I ain't gonna front, I love treatment in college, man. Like <laughs> ice boot, all, I loved it all, right? I stayed in, I stayed in the training room. Man, I, I bet, man, for sure. Yeah. So um, uh, what what was like the recruiting process going, going into college? Because me personally, it was a lot. It was just like coaches texting me, calling me, emailing me and stuff like that. Like, I want you to come out, come through across across the country just to right. just to talk for a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> I was in school, you know what I'm saying? Recruiting was very simple. It was mm -hmm. not complex at all because they, were, they they had a regulation on how many times they could call you, mm. how many times they send a text even how many times they can visit your school. You know what I'm saying? So for me, when Kent State came the first time, I was a junior. They was like, man, look, we want to offer you a full scholarship now. I'm like, uh, all right, cool. But I don't know nothing about y'all. Like, who who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and, and no lie, man, the dude told me, Coach Pratt, I'll never forget it. He was like, man, you got a video game? You got a college football video game? I said, yeah. He said, look us up. I said, all right, whatever. I never, man, I never looked them up. I I never <laughs> looked them up. Because, you know, I'm thinking, not not thinking uh, worldwide or, you know, mm. wide that other guys are getting recruited. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're looking at other people. So for me, I'm like, man, another college is going to come. Now, more colleges did come, but they came late. Mm. Can't say stuck with me through it all, you know what I'm saying? Through everything. So um, it was very simple for me. Like they call, they'll call me on the phone, like, hey man, how you doing? How you feeling? You know, we heard about this newspaper article. Uh, you had any thoughts of changing your mind? You know, camps for us wasn't that big. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Going to a camp in California or going to camp over here, wasn't that big for us. So it was like, you're gonna get recruited from from what you put in on this film at your high school, you know what I'm saying? Very select guys went to camps, you know what I'm saying? So so for me the the process was pretty easy, you know? Okay. So, so um you know going to college, uh y'all get gear, stuff like that. So what what were your, like especially like cleats and stuff that's start with cleats. So like what were your favorite type of cleats to wear? Was it like high tops, mid tops, low tops oh. and your favorite cool. brand too? Okay, so my first year I was there, we had Nike. So my mm -hmm. first year there, we had Nike. Oh, and I don't Why think. Are you sitting like, out here? Oh, it's sorry, it's my grandma. Grandma, oh, I'm doing this video, grandma. Tell grandma say hello. <laughs> uh, he said hello, grandma. The first on the video. <laughs> so my first year we had Nike. So Nike, I love because I had the Vicks in um, high school. Mm. Vicks. So I love Nike brand. I lo I loved it, and my feet felt very good. At um, I didn't know what the name of them was. They were like some Vipers or something like that, some mid Vipers. But then we switched to New Balance. Mm. They were terrible shoes. Let me take them. Terrible cleats. Ter terrible cleats. Horrible. Then we went back to Nike. So we did Nike, two years of New Balance, and then Nike again. So I, I love and enjoy Nike. Um, our gloves were cutters, come from the brand Cutters. Um, we had some Nike stuff, Nike gloves at the end. But um, so Nike was my gloves, Nike was my shoes and everything. And then I had a, um, I forgot the helmet, a revolutionary helmet. Mm. Grab a rebel helmet. So I, I had the gear, man. I was I was swagged out. Man. I was swagged out. <laughs> All right. So so would you say it was that person? I expect because personally, I wouldn't say I like that kind of. Were you, were you that type of person to wear all the gear on the field, or he's like a simple guy? He's wore a long sleeve and some. Just <laughs> so so just so you know, I never wore a long sleeve. Okay. Never. I was never. I, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't care how cold it was. I did not like it. Um, I used to wear the half sleeves, mm. um, and then I would wear the uh, the bands, like the little, uh, uh, you know, Nike bands or whatever. Yeah. On, 
And that was really it for me, man. Like I was never that guy that have the socks, the the, the, the knee bands, the, the, the bro, what are you doing? What the heck is this? <laughs> I, I felt that I was by far the most basic guy. I was basic, <laughs> I was basic, yo. I couldn't do it. I had the visor now. My visor was was dope, but I mean, other than that, bro, I, all that stuff, bro, I'm gonna take it off. Like I'm gonna literally <laughs> take all this stuff off, man. So that's that was me, man. I was plain. Okay. So um as we as we get to the end of this video, um yeah. trying to learn about more about your stuff a little bit more. So um trying to go back a little bit. So is there anything you would want to say to yourself going into high school, like e even going to high school or going to college, what would you what would you say to yourself if you uh, to if I can go back, man, and talk to my younger self, I would really tell him you got to hit the weight room twice as hard. Mm. You got to do extra sprints because the coaches are going to give you the basic. They're going to give you, I ain't going to say the bare minimum, but they're going to give you what they feel you need. You need more. You know, you need more. And that's honestly what I would tell myself. Um, I will also tell my younger self to look up the school before before uh before going doing that food thing, <laughs> what i did you know what i'm saying but um i would really that's what i would really focus on if i had to go back on back and tell my younger self like look man hit the weight room do the next, you know do more to be great you know okay that's what's up so this last question i gotta i gotta I, it's pretty much my football players even basketball players, what, what was that one, that one specific moment in any play that humbled you the most? Oh my God. Oh, okay. I'm gonna tell, let me tell you this story. Let me tell you this story. We're playing Ohio State. Uh huh. Uh, they just, man, it's 28 nothing. 28 nothing, right? 28 nothing. And, you know, I've never, in my career, like out of all the types of uh, football I've been played, all the levels, I've never been clearly ran over. Like I've never, <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying, like I've never been hit so hard where I'm. I just flew back. Mm. So we're playing Ohio State, twenty-eight nothing. I'm kind of like in the mood, like man, we get out, we get out, but we'll, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to be here no more. They kick the ball off. We got to do a right return. I'll never forget this. Number 16 is running down the field, man. And and six, it sounds like when he's running, it sounds like he's stomping. Like, like his feet, his body is just that heavy. Boom, boom. And I'm like, what the what is that? <laughs> and man, I get to my, my position to block him. And man, he had a lion. I'll never forget this. He had a lion tattoo on his arm. He hit me so hard, the lion, I feel like the lion opened his mouth. Like, <laughs> he had a close, the, the lion's mouth was closed on his arm. But when he hit me, the lion mouth opened. And, and my feet went in the air, everything. He even made the play. So when I, <laughs> so, when, so when I ran off the field, right, my, the special teams coach, uh, McManus, <laughs> said, <laughs> He said, welcome to college football. And I, I, I almost told him to shut up. Like, bro, like, <laughs> I just got ran over on national television, bro, Whoa. shut up. But um, <laughs> that was my most humbling, and that let me know that I got to put in extra work. You know, I got to do more. You know what I'm saying? To, to be prepared, because there's always going to be somebody bigger, stronger, faster. You know what I'm saying? So... That was my humbling experience. That was my humbling experience, man. Okay. So actually, one more question. This question kind of contradicts the last one. Right. But have you ever made a play to where like after the play you got up and you said, ah, I'm that guy? Okay. So um my mom, my mom actually uh speaks about this play a lot with my uh family and everything like that. So we're in I'm in high school, it's my senior year. We're in the state semis. And uh, we're playing this team. And it's actually kind of weird because thinking back, we played them on their home field. Mm. 
the state semis. Why are we at y'all home field? Like, but whatever. <laughs> so we're, we're playing this team, uh, C.D. Hilton, and it's they're running a jet sweep. And, I mean, this he has the whole side of the field. Like, I don't know where my teammates went. Like, it's just like they, like, all disappeared. But if I did not make this tackle, man, he would have been gone. Mm. So basically, I shoot the gap. And it was so clean, man. It was so such a, a beautiful run through that it's almost like everybody just went quiet. And I and I, you know, and I got him. I packed him and everything. And I got up. I'm screaming and I'm hollering, but it's like I cannot hear nobody. Mm. Like, and, I'm, and, and it's like almost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like ten thousand people there at this high school field, and it's like I can't hear nobody. And uh, they end up catching a picture of me. Uh, in this pose, it was all on the newspaper and everything. But that's when I, I, I was like, man, I'm that guy. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm him. You know what I'm saying? I'm Hemothy. Stop playing with me. <laughs> Stop playing with me. But uh, that was that was that moment, man. Ah, uh, for sure. Ah, uh, for sure. I, I just in the video. I appreciate you for taking 10, 15 minutes out your hey, time man. to come talk. No uh, Anytime, man. Anytime. For sure. Just I appreciate you for. Real. I'll drop. I'll drop your social media. Um, in the comments and stuff like that, and I'll tag you when it comes out. I have a few videos already planned out, so it should be sometime next week to come out. So I got you for real. All right, man. Hey, keep doing your thing, man. I love what you got going on, man. I love grandma and everything. <laughs> me, man. Anytime, all right? Oh, for sure. I got you, man. For sure. I appreciate it. No problem.